is exactly what she's doing now. We've done quite a bit of repositioning. At one point, uh, there were no lionesses on the carcass. They all came back, regrouped. But one has gone back again to fetch their prize possession. Look at this. Now, it's a very awkward thing to drag. You know, if it was a small, something small like an impala, they could pick it up quite high off the ground and just walk with it. Whereas here, they use the interesting technique of course, of either front leg on either side of the, the neck and then trying to drag it. So if any of you have done or not wanting to do two trips to back and forth to the car for grocery, you know, you add 10 bags on one arm, eight on the other, and then somehow, I've done it before, I put a roll of toilet paper in between my legs and I did the shuffle <laughs> all the way inside. It did take me a lot longer, but it was totally worth it because I didn't have to go back to the car and even manage to lock it. <laughs> I thought that was an achievement. And I feel like that's exactly what these lions are doing too. But now, of course, dragging something around, you're burning vital calories. So it's best to just stop every now and then and, well, revitalize. Have a nibble on some zebra. That's exactly what she's going to do. But she's getting closer and closer to the tree. And I'm pretty sure that's what's going to happen is that they're just going to keep dragging it towards here. And, and pop it underneath a Balanites tree. There's very sort of uh, restricted shade in this area. It's wide open spaces. Of course, they can go down to the river or, and um, head that way, but um, they probably won't. They'll probably sit out in the open. And the wind is starting up again. Oh, that's a pity. I thought we were going to have a lovely sort of still day, but that's okay. At least the sun is out. The clouds are moving in, but nothing that looks like a rain cloud just yet. That might, of course, change for this afternoon. Well, there's a couple with grey bottoms that look a little bit dangerous, but nothing over the tops of our heads, which is perfect. That suits me just fine. And you know what's really amazing? And something we don't get to see all the time, especially when you have been based in at Juma, where there's not a lot of high ground, is when you're up on the escarpment at camp uh, and you're basically looking at the clouds eye level, especially these low-lying clouds, um, it's really amazing. It's such a beautiful scene. But this is so great. We're very spoiled this morning by the sounds of it. I mean, not just with us, but with all the other uh, sightings you've had as well. Joe, you said that's why this lioness looks so muscular from all the weightlifting. Most certainly. Um, I don't know if you've all, I think everyone's pretty much seen it. Uh, how sort of staunch the lionesses are here in comparison to the ones in the sabi sand. You know, the girls in the sabi sand seem to be a lot more tall and elegant, whereas these, these girls look like they haven't uh, skipped gymming their arms. Um, you know, they did, did seem to do it, if not once a day, twice a day. They're very, very powerful shoulders. And, um, you know, all the way down to their paws, they just look a lot more muscular. It's hard out here. You know, you've got to travel very far distances. And you're taking down large prey, of course, and lions and sabi sands take down large prey too, but I feel like these cats are having to drag, exactly like what Joe has just said, drag their food a lot further distances, whereas the lions and the sabi sand, it's so dense there that they can really just, you know, take something down and right next to them, there'll be a tree or a shrub of sorts that they can tuck their kill under. Yeah, it's a little bit different. I mean, there's some areas that have got shrubs around and it, it makes it a bit easier. But most of the areas are vast open plains with, you know, just termite mounds in the odd tree here and there. I'm really chuffed with this morning. I've had a lot of fun and I hope that you've also had a lot of fun. Now, she's munching away. And we've seen a couple of them eating on the zebra. And Scott, you're wondering if they have to make a fresh kill every single night. No, not necessarily. And uh, it's not really up to the lions, is it? Because the amount of times that they'll actually miss trying to catch something versus how successful they, they are is, is quite great. So even though they might try and hunt every single night, it doesn't mean that they're going to catch something. Uh, it takes, well, they've got to have a little bit of luck on their side too, I suppose, and make sure that they execute their maneuvers 100% in order to be successful at bringing down an animal. So it's tough work for these cats. It's not easy. Even though they are the biggest and most powerful uh, cats out here in Africa, uh, they, they still do have a lot of um, 
sort of things in their pathway that, what am I even trying to say here? The obstacles, there we go, that's the word that I'm looking for. Uh, many obstacles in, in their pathway. But they manage, they definitely do. It's, it's really tough for them at the moment now because the herds have moved on. And I reckon when the herds were here, I unfortunately didn't get to see it. And Brent was teasing me earlier about how many kills I've seen since I've been here. Ha ha ha, Brent, rub it in. Why don't you? <laughs> I haven't seen a kill yet. Can you believe it? I've just been um, so unlucky. But that's okay. I've been fortunate enough to see many in my life. Uh, besides not seeing that, the, the interesting things I have seen really do make up for it. But of course, we're out here to film the migration and um, all that all that happens around the migration. And a big part of that is, of course, lions taking down wildebeest and zebra. So that is our goal until the migration is over. Now, Odie Farming, I'm wondering why they've eaten the zebra in this fashion. I presume that you're talking about the fact that they've eaten the hindquarter. They've also eaten the head of the zebra. Um, that is, that's quite typical. Those are the favorite parts of an animal. And because there's so few lions here, yes, you've got four cubs and two adults. They, I mean, they don't make a huge dent in it. I mean, they've probably been feeding on this for quite some time now. Um, and there's still lots and lots of flesh on the zebra. So the rump... Just like we would go for the uh, rump of an animal, say for a cow to feed on, it's a favoured part, uh, that's what they, they like. They love to eat the eyes of the animals, you, you'll often find them uh, chewing around 